I was at the RSPCA Animal Care Centre where I'd be discussing the increasing problem of abandoned and neglected animals. I had organised to speak to the centre's manager, Karina Taylor. So, Karina, approximately how many animals are housed here at this facility? Um, right at this moment we have 35 dogs and puppies and 63 cats and kittens, but we are over our limit at the moment. That's quite a lot. It is. And how long would you say they will be held here for on average? Um, they'll be held here until they sell. Right. Yeah. And what percentage would be relocated to a new home if they're lucky? Um, all of them. We don't do any euthanasia of healthy animals um, at our shelter here, so they're here till they sell, whether that takes one week or one year. And for the viewers that are watching, what can they do if they want to take initiative and help prevent some of the animals from being neglected? Um, the burned? first and most important thing would be the sexing. Um, you know, you need to sex your cats and dogs at home, males and females, um, to prevent unwanted litters. You know, there's enough animals around here without homes already, rather than breeding more um, that aren't going to find homes. Terrific advice. Now, for a pet that goes missing, mm -hmm. what procedure would the owner take, uh, the right protocol, in order to locate them? Okay, they definitely need to give us a call. Uh, we get all their details down and photos of their dogs or cats and a description, and it goes on our lost and found through RSPCA Queensland. Um, so all shelters and all staff um, can view that and have knowledge of that. They also, apart from us, need to contact the local councils who take in stray dogs, um, vet clinics in case your dog's been injured and been taken to a vet, and Facebook these days. Everyone's on Facebook with different kinds of posts for lost and found animals, so definitely be putting your animal on there and double checking. That's terrific advice. Yep. And uh, a lot of animals are microchipped and vaccinated here at this centre? We, we dissect and microchip and vaccinate all our animals in our care for re-adoption. The animals we get in as strays, very rarely are they microchipped or dissexed. Now, delicate subject matter. Mm -hmm. nice. We don't euthanise any healthy animals. Right. Yep. Um, the only time an animal will be euthanised is if it's got major health problems that you know might be taking years or thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for treatment or things like cancer or um, apart from that we now treat everything that comes in our care no matter sort of what kind of cost it takes as long as we can resell the animal afterwards and find it decent home so we do not euthanise. What would be some of the reasons that someone would abandon an animal? I can't picture um, why or how. In this day and would... age with us at the shelter here our main reason for animals coming in is uh, rentals moving house, moving town, and money, not being able to afford vet bills. Right, and you see a huge increase in uh, abandoned animals on Christmas? Uh, yes, always. Um, a lot of the time it's something as simple as they want to go away and can't afford boarding, so they dump their animal off at a shelter, and those same people at times you see come back after Christmas trying to buy another animal. So what advice would you give to a pet owner so they would avoid their animal ending up at a shelter like this? Please make sure when you make that decision that you realise it is a lifetime decision for that animal. The animal lived 10 to 15 years, you're going to have that animal for that amount of time. Um, you need to keep that in your mind and acknowledge that. You know, when you, whether you're renting, moving houses, thinking of getting a job overseas or somewhere else, your animal should come first. Right. And uh, if someone come across a lost animal, the first thing to do would be to phone the contact hotline us. here? Yep, contact us, the council, and your vet clinic would be your first barrier to go through. Well, that's terrific, Karina. I'm sure you, you've uh, educated a lot of people on uh, the do's and don'ts yep. when it comes to caring for animals. Yep. I made my way to the adoption centre where I'd arranged to view the current conditions the animals were kept in and their general welfare. The ones that have all been sex microchipped, vaccinated and have had behavioural tests so we know that they're all right to go to a new family. Okay. Um, past the gate we have only um, six pens set up for strays or privates that just walk in the door before we process them. And we have them behind the gate with no entry except for staff only because okay, we don't yep. behavior, so they could bite somebody or True. a kid could walk down and put their hand in and get themselves bitten. Yep. Um, in here we have our cat adoption, so all our cats that have also been through the process, been to the vets, to sex, been microchip, vaccinated, everything done, are in here available for adoption already. And out the back there we have another set up for cats that have just walked in the door, kittens that are too young, mothers with babies and the animals that um, are under medication for, you know, whether they've got cat flu or ring and things like that. Everything's well organised. Everything's well organised. Of course, we always you know, need a bigger shelter and more pen room, but yep. um, that's the same with everybody. So we've been extra careful with the young ones. They're only about four or five weeks of age. Um, these four here are part of Rockhampton ones as well that we've already dealt with today and have got them available for adoption. They'll be done off the vet sometime next week. Um, two boxes and border collies. 
Another litter of puppies down here, also are the ones that came from Rocky yesterday. Um, they're about seven, eight weeks of age. Um, they're in here. Um, so they'll also be going up for adoption <coughs> next week. They're adorable, aren't they? They are beautiful, yeah. You shouldn't have any trouble seeking new homes for them? No. And we do sell a lot of our animals sort of interstate yeah. and um, you know, to Brisbane and that sort of thing as well because Bundaberg is one of the worst places in the state for getting puppies. Um, a lot of the other is that right? Yeah, a lot of the other shelters don't get puppies. We are always inundated with them mm -hmm. um, because people aren't accepting their animals up here in Bundaberg. It's a very sad story. And these are new arrivals, are they? They're new arrivals. Just turned up yesterday all the way from Rockhampton. Right. One of them's a little bit thin, a bit gaunt. Yep, they've all had a worm and a vaccination today. Right. With good food in their stomachs. So That's very positive, isn't it? Yeah, so the next couple of days they'll come along brilliantly. Yeah. It doesn't take long once they get to us. They'll be back to full health again. Full health within a week. Yep. They're very resilient. They definitely are, especially the young puppies, yeah. The only problem is being away from their mother, they don't seem to have a lot of um, antibodies, which is why we, you know, vaccinate immediately every two weeks while right. they're to give them some kind of coverage. Um, mm. I'll also show you one of the strays we got in the other yep. week. Um, stray dog found out on the street, but she's huh. she a lot better than when she first came to us the other week, but she had no hair on her whatsoever. Um, so we're treating her for, it's called Demodex, it's a mite in the okay. skin um, that staffies are prone to, but um, you know she gets injections every week for a period of eight weeks and then goes for another skin scrape. If it's still there, another course of injections every week. Um, it will be a month, month and month's worth of treatment, but she'll finally look like the dog she's supposed to be and then go up for adoption and sell. They definitely receive the best possible care, don't they? Yes, they do, here. Yeah. That shows. Yep. Um, yeah, we do everything we can to treat um, sickness and injuries these days. There's a lot of animals yep. we send down to wake hole for major surgeries. Right. Um, you know, even specialist surgeries. Um, so, yeah, nothing, as I said, nothing is euthanised um, these days um, unless you had... Uh, probably the only thing we euthanise these days really in our shelter is private animals that people come right. in and we're a bit cheaper. It'd have to be a severe debilitating yes. situation yes. for that to occur. Yep. Basically a last resort. That's right, yes, last yep. resort. Um, also would fall on the behaviour of the animal too, you know, yep. if you had an animal that needed, you know, two major um, leg surgeries with eye surgeries and it was also aggressive, well yep. then, you know, you have to, might make, have to make hard decision on that one. And what would be the pros and cons between Adopting an animal from this shelter or purchasing one from the pet store? Oh, your major, your major would be a lot of the pet shops still use um, backyard breeders. Right. Which is devastating and the animals are not in good health. They have hereditary problems and they don't last very long in life. Um, and also, you know, ours are fully health tested. We know a lot of the time where they come from. They're not from backyard breeders and we offer a health policy for a couple of weeks once they leave us. Um, the dogs with us are also, as I said, microchip to sex, fully vaccinated, worm, fleed. An uh, animal from a pet shop will probably maybe have a microchip and one first vaccination. And right. That's very reassuring to yeah. someone that was uh, a little bit of unaware of the proper channels yes. and the protocol that and is taken. And we're always here for the people, whether it's you know one month or one year after they adopt. If they've got any problems, they know they can call us and we do everything we can to try and fix that problem. Well, if there was any maybe. doubts in someone's mind, I'm sure that definitely cleared it up. Yep. Very reassuring. Yes. Some are strays and some are privates. Um, you know, council in Bundaberg um, usually deal with strays, but we take strays in when we have room. A lot of the time what we do have in here is your private surrenders, um, animals we've tried to save from other pounds that are due for euthanasia, um, or seizures from our inspector um, for cruelty cases. Very reassuring. Yep. Now, she was a surrender because her owner had passed away. Oh, right. Um, some situations are unavoidable, aren't right. they? Yeah, it's definitely unavoidable. Yeah. Um, you know, we do have a lot of the older people in Bundaberg and you know they might be put in nursing homes or something like that mm. need someone to look after their animal. Yep. It's not always a case where the owner is at fault? No, not always, no. Um, <laughs> Jack was surrendered um, because the lady that owned it, she was a nice lady but she decided to get the big breed puppies and they were too much for him so... Hey Jack! You've been quite a few months now, Jack, coming out. Mm. Oh boy. One day, Baba, good day will come. <coughs> you too, Pippa. What are the chances that Jack will find a home in the next six to twelve months? Um, hopefully we're even willing to discount his price. Um, 
you know, we do have set prices, but you know, we need to get that dog out and we really want it to be find a new home. We're more than willing to discount um, to find in the right home. And that would be a substantial discount too? Well, yes, we have set prices. All adult dogs over four months are 315 and okay. 465 but you know, I can get to a stage where I can drop price to maybe 199 as a minimal. And that cost is a lot of overheads keeping this centre running, isn't it? Yes, of course. I mean, we vaccinate dogs every two weeks, especially puppies. Yeah. Um, you know, those vaccinations are $80 a pop. We also do heartworm tests and FIB tests here for cats and dogs. Um, a lot of in expenses are incurred. Yes, yes. Um, even the basic vet bill, uh, especially these days when we're treating so many more problems the animals have medically. Yeah, it can be astronomical, can't it? Yes. We, all get, we have dog walk a couple of times a day, the ones that are covered with their vaccinations. Yep. Um, they get enrichment and playtime out in those back areas. That's very positive. Um, yes. So there's no need for anyone to feel overwhelmingly sad, like uh, no. they're in... Uh... No, they're safe, they're sound, they're well looked after, and um, and they have a lot of um, a lot of time with us and the yes. volunteers yes. and a lot of enrichment, yes. which is most important. There is a sense of urgency, though. We need people to come yes. down here and uh, yes. do the right thing. Well, we have you know more animals that you know need to be surrendered and brought in, um, which of course we can't take unless we sell something for room. Right. Yeah. It's an ongoing issue. It's definitely ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be getting worse, not better. Yes. Mm, unfortunately. Yep. I was satisfied with the well-being of the animals at the centre. However, it would take a combined effort to reduce the numbers kept in captivity, and that was evident. I also realised the importance of having animals microchipped in order to stem the flow of missing pets. So to best avoid your pet from ending up at the pound, it is imperative you take the right precautions.